Hello, this is Julia Whitup and with Creative Journey. I have with me this morning Willie Paul, who is the owner and operator, I should say principal person, <laughs> Willie Paul Studios. And what was the other website? Oh, planetshifter.com. Planetshifter.com. Right. So what, tell us what a planet shifter is. Well, you're looking at one, for instance, I embody that in the flesh. Uh, I would say planet shifters are people who are active in the transition, who are taking uh, their communities to a better and more holistic place. So this is a proactive day-to-day um, -day transition that we're, we're supporting with content um, at planetshifter.com. Okay. And you do a lot of, and you do a lot with permaculture. Can you tell us what that is? Sure, I'd love to. Permaculture to me is um, less about food or food production or gardening. Uh, permaculture to me and how I apply it is, um, it's about values. It's about giving to community, being in community, um, teaching each other. And uh, one of the other principles or ethics of permaculture is to share, share the abundance, share the extra that you have with others. So although permaculture is, is about um, food production, designing with nature, to me it's about values. So I, I apply those values, I test those values, I investigate those values with the people I talk to daily. Okay. So it's more than about food. Big time, yeah. If it's just about food, it's really not hitting the mark. Right, okay. So that'd be like clothing, too? And, uh, who? and what about, what other areas are you very active in? Oh, well, I've been um, considering myself a new mythologist for Oh, I don't know, six, seven years. I'm challenging the status quo, um, challenging the old mythology. I'm, I'm making new stories and new myths and uh, writing about new theories, um, juxtapositioning um, mythology with some of these uh, current paradigms. Um, I find a lot of solace and power in looking at mythology in, in new ways. And, and, uh, not stopping at uh, the Greek or North uh, books. So um, I'm actually trying to integrate what I call permaculture with new mythology. That's a, a very um, potent uh, intersection here at Plant Shifter. Okay. Um, tell us more about that. Well, I, I really need to stay out of the box. I, I jumped out of the box seven, eight years ago when I got my P, PDC, which is a, a permaculture design certificate. And I started to look around and, and notice uh, a lot of the problems we're having. My approach um, in general is to integrate, not separate, not, not look at... Um, individual solutions, but to bring things together and look at how they interact and how we can accelerate some of these solutions. So I have been integrating permaculture with mythology and uh, nature spirit and um, the transition movements. Those are big, big topics that I've uh, tackled. And uh, I put out a book uh, at iTunes. It's an iBook. Uh, that talks about this integration and gives people interviews and content from um, from my work at Plant Shifter. What's the name of the book? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> let me let me uh, let me grab that for you. Okay. Hey, there's your kid. That was my phone. I should bet I better turn it off. <laughs> the name of the book is called Mythic Warriors Reader and Myth Engine. 
And uh, as I said, it has interviews and articles and new myths that I've uh, put together over the years. And um, it's, uh, it's a good book. I think people should check it out. Okay. That sounds interesting. What about housing? Are you involved with anything uh, that deals with housing? Well, I'm, I often find myself writing as an urban planner, urban designer. I have a master's in community planning, for instance, and I'm in, interested in people in the relationship to their housing and to their land and to their, their transportation. So I have uh, designed uh, community centers and uh, startups um, with this integration in mind. Um, I notice a lot of um, housing going up in, in the peninsula and the Bay Area and uh, wonder just how, how viable it will be, how, how expensive it will be. Seems like a chicken and the egg. The more housing you have, the more people will show up and then the more issues you have with other things like traffic and mass transit. Yeah, that's one of the reasons Boulder, Colorado, has a no growth policy. They try yeah. to keep it where there is no growth. Is that where you're from? I'm from Colorado. Oh, okay. Very good. Yeah, no growth is a big controversy. That doesn't sound like a capitalist idea. No, it's not, but uh, I think we're kind of looking at the results of ultimate capitalization. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I'd say. Maybe capitalism isn't a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm no fan of capitalism. Me either. What <laughs> about uh, those tiny house communities? I think those might be perfect. Have a big, huge living room and a big kitchen, and then everybody can have their own little tiny house. <laughs> it sort of sounds like a, a series of teepees with a big fire in the middle, doesn't it? Well, that works. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of models out there. Well, you still have to you still have to assess for uh, the human waste and the water and the electricity. So, it, tiny houses don't really solve everything. No, true that. So, <laughs> so how many people are involved with your projects? Well, I I make a. Uh, an effort always to hire contractors or consultants. I don't. I, I don't hire anybody full time. I can't do that financially. But I, I tend to reach out, maybe through Craigslist or through my network, and and hire people for project uh, project by project sort of status. So I, that's worked really well. That's sustainable for everybody. So I I can hire people, but I don't have to pay pay them long term. Mm -hmm. So that works out. Okay. Good yeah. question. And in what? Uh, how does your uh, how does your mythology take into account the move towards legalizing marijuana? Oh, well, it doesn't really have anything to do with myth mythology. To me, uh, uh, marijuana is a big issue and a big bad problem. I do not support marijuana unless it's very carefully regulated and for medical use only. I, I fear that uh, the states that are legalizing it will become zombie states and um, we'll, we'll be going backwards, not forwards. It's another, another sort of capitalist thing that people jumped on because they thought they could make money and they pushed it hard. It's, it's really not about community at all. It's just about profit, I think. Oh. Well. Hmm. So I'm, I'm not in favor of it at all, really. You're not in favor of it at all. No, that's a new. I well, what's like your, what's your opinion? Uh, my opinion is it's a mind expanding drug, and anything that expands your mind is good. Oh, okay. And I think we need a new mythology around drugs in general. Hmm. Even even pharmaceuticals. Well. Not really, because they take the active ingredient out of the plant and do something artificial with it. But I think that Mother Nature or God or whoever's in charge of that. 
<laughs> puts the stuff in the plant that's needed and you need to keep the whole plant. You need to use the plant whole, not take out the active ingredient and put it with a bunch of other stuff and put a patent on it. Do you think that the marijuana uh, hurts your lungs? I don't smoke it. I eat it. Oh, you eat it. Well, that's interesting. That's a better option, I think, too. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, definitely. I agree and I've been using it for um, meditation and creative work, and I think that we should take a look at take a look at that. Hmm. People would stop drinking and start doing marijuana. There'd be less violence, for sure. People hmm. on pot don't go around killing people. Hmm. Okay. Well. Yeah, I respect that. Well, thank you. <laughs> you sounded so adamant. I thought he's not going to go. He's not going to even consider this new mythology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I'm not just would question the mind expansion part. I, I've smoked a lot of pot in my day, and I just got dumb. I, I don't know about expanding anything. So Maybe. I just went to bed. I went to sleep. I got hungry and ate. So there's a lot of history there. I know rule a lot about. So well, I'd, I'd be I'd be interested to learn more about how you think it's expanding something. Totally. Well, join my group creativejourney.org, and <laughs> we'll do some mind expansion. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a matter of one thing. When you did a lot of pot, it was probably illegal. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. you were get you were getting crap. You don't know what you were getting really. That's true. So the strain makes a difference and also the dose. People overdose on everything. They do <laughs> too much alcohol, too much everything. You have to <laughs> learn how to dose yourself correctly. <laughs> okay, I thought it was a recreational thing too. Well, even recreational, when people do too much, they just fall asleep. Yeah. If you, they're not going to be, I don't know, unless you're doing it in your dreams, you're not mind expanding if you're asleep. <laughs> I hear you. So I only do sativa and I only do edibles. And now in Colorado, we have it in the, it's only sold in the 10 milligram. It has to be in 10, 10 milligram dose sizes. Oh, okay so that you know exactly how much you're getting and that seems to be the perfect size to do mind expansion and actually do things while you're in that altered state mm -hmm. okay i buy that that sounds like they have a regulation there a little bit of oversight yeah there's some smart people working on this good I'm trying to replace alcohol as a drug of choice for the nation hmm. and teach people how to use it correctly. Well, probably alcohol wouldn't be too bad if they used it correctly too, but the thing about alcohol, if you overdose, you die. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Well, I'm glad to see you're open to that. Oh, yeah. You know, that's all around. You can't be closed off to something that's surrounding you. That would be silly. Yeah. Well, you... I would be happy to see you join our group and do some of the activities with us. I actually have I have joined your group. You have? Well, yeah. I got, oh, you have? Yes, that's right. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll get together. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, tell us again where we can get your book. Oh, that's an iTunes, uh, iTunes and uh, Apple iTunes store. It's it's there. Just uh, you can probably find it quickly by typing in permaculture because I'm I'm sure there's not a lot of permaculture books there yet. Okay. Or mythology. And Willie Paul. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Love to have it sold some more. Well. Thanks for being on our show and being a guest speaker for the Creative Journey. It's been a pleasure. I, I, uh, this is my second time. Cool. <laughs> okay, I'm going to 
end the meeting now. Great. Okay, that ended, or I'm going to 